First up, electronic parts, of course. Something all taped up well. What do we have? I see a circuit board. Oh, it looks like more of those flat flex cable boards. Just like the 24 pin flat flex cable breakout board I had, this one is a six pin with 0.5 millimeter pitch on one side, one millimeter pitch on the other. So I'm gonna add those to my collection of flat flex cable parts and put them to use when I have everything. And I've ordered several breakout boards, so I've already received a 24 pin, I believe, in the past. Here's a six pin, five pieces. It's got 0.5 millimeter pitch on one side and one millimeter on the other. $1.56 for the five from Elex Best. When I receive all the various cables and headers and connectors that I've ordered, I can start putting them all to use. I believe I have a motor coming that's got a flat flex cable on it, which is how this all started, but I haven't received the motor yet. So when I do, I hope to be all set up so I can put a connector on a board like this and be able to hook up to the motor. Next, more electronic parts, of course. Oh, flat flex cables, finally. Four pin, it looks like. So these are one millimeter, four pin, 10 centimeters long, flat flex cable. So here's a flat flex connector and the pads on the cable look like the right pitch. So if we insert this and push to close it, there it is. Now I would just need to put this on a breakout board, which I don't have four pins right now, but on this six pin as an example, we would just put this on here and use the 0.1 inch headers and have a way to use flat flex cable. So once I get all the parts, I'll be able to start doing projects with this. In the meantime, into the bin it goes. So I finally started receiving flat flex cable. I ordered one millimeter pitch, four pin, 10 centimeters long, 10 pieces for $1.90 from I chose I love. Well, what more can you say? Electronic parts. What kind of parts? Well, that was no good. Well, I shredded this one. What do we have? Little breadboards, it looks like. Yes. Oh, breadboards and, oh, a breadboard Arduino prototyping board shield. This Arduino shield, well, it comes with a breadboard, but I guess you don't have to use the breadboard. But you can do prototyping if you want to do some Arduino projects that you're going to be playing around a lot with and you want a little local breadboard. And of course, there's a few bent pins. Those can be straightened out properly when this is docked on an Arduino. This board has a few LEDs and push buttons, including a reset. And it provides top side connections for all the I.O. headers. So you plug it in and then you can still access all the headers and a few buttons and a prototyping area. Bit of a weird soldering job here, but I assume these are all meant to be bridged together on each connector. Yeah, this is a five volt bus and a ground bus. So these are all common each for power. The Arduino breakout header with a little breadboard and a couple of buttons and LEDs Prototyping shield $1.85 from Good Module. So it says one reset button, one general button, and two LEDs. 
I'll have to look more into this, maybe see if there's more documentation on this. I'm sure it's a generic board that a lot of people sell. And it's just another way to work on Arduino projects, aside from having a bunch of DuPont cables going from Arduino over to a breadboard. If I just need a couple of tie points, I can use something like this. The set of colorful little breadboards, 170 tie points, six in a set of different colors, $1.95 from CN2015, Ming Q. Not much to say, just your standard breadboards, and they do seem to allow me to hook up, so I think I just had a bad purchase that one time where I, I bought the bigger breadboard and I could not plug anything into it. I know other people have had issues like this as well, so that's why I'm so interested in seeing where can I buy this stuff and count on it, at least so far. Maybe I can still run into a problem getting a bad batch from a supplier who gave me good stuff at one point. It may just be random luck. So, the LED test. So, no problems with this breadboard inserting an LED. Every time I buy a breadboard, whether it's in a store or an otherwise reputable online place, like DigiKey even, I'm just going to be doing this test. You know, if one works, they should all work from the same batch, from the same supplier. No problem. Electronic parts. What kind of parts? More breadboards. Oh, the miniature ones. And some small. It looks like I was on a shopping spree for breadboards. So, let's check these Lego style out. These little ones are good for just a few components that you need to hold together, like maybe a transistor and an LED or something like that. But, do they work? Looks like they do. And that is a big victory for buying breadboards on eBay. Pick another random one. They're all the same batch, so again, I expect it to work. It goes in very easy. Once I line it up correctly and take human error out of the equation. No trouble. Now these ones remind me of old Radio Shack style with this long strip to dock to. So I kind of bought these for nostalgic reasons and so far so good as well. No problem. They aren't the easiest thing to dock, but my plan wasn't really to dock them all up. It's all just intermediate, small, and miniature sizes I wanted for various independent purposes. Seven mini 25-point breadboard, 99 cents for the seven. Alice 110, 1983. Not much to say about these, other than they seem to work. <laughs> they are five by five holes, and they have those little Lego-style mounting pegs on the bottom. I've ordered some base plates to mount these two. I will be expecting those any day now. Also, from Alice 110-1983, I've got two of these 270 tie point breadboards. Each one was $2.09. And I thought it was interesting, these edge pieces that are used to mount them to each other if you want to do that. It's like the Radio Shack breadboards I had in the 80s, and I thought for a couple of dollars, why not buy some of these? And finally, some electronic parts. Which I don't know what they are. Oh, is this a kit? Well, I can't read this, but I see an inductor of some sort, a PCB, a bunch of through hole parts. Oh, I see FM. Is this an FM transmitter? 
It's got a tuning, a couple of tuning parts. Is that a potentiometer and possibly a tuning capacitor? A couple of different size coils, a transistor. This is an FM wireless transmitter kit. $2.94 from Robot Home. Looks like it runs from 1.5 volts to 9 volts, which is convenient for battery operation. So it should work with any FM radio and be adjustable for the full band. And it says we can go up to 100 meters. Of course, <laughs> who knows? But this is only going to be for just experimenting within a small local range like they're showing here. Maybe two things on the same bench, just to see. Now I don't know about this um, part placement diagram here. They're calling what looks like a microphone a speaker. And there's a microphone in the bill of materials. I don't see a speaker in here. So I'm assuming you can plug in external audio from some sort of mp3 player or such, or use this microphone and adjust the input volume level. There's an antenna, a frequency range adjustment. It looks like it's fixed with some sort of substance here. I will build this and see how it works. So it looks like I'm getting better results with buying breadboards on eBay. And of course, more breadboards means more projects coming.